Today I'm going to be answering some frequently asked questions and giving you everything you need to know about Purely Preschool. Hi, I'm Rachel from 7 and All and I am a second generation homeschooler. I am also the writer and creator of the Purely Preschool curriculum and I myself used it with my son over the past year when he was three years old. So I'm going to be telling you about this curriculum, answering some of the questions I've gotten over the past year, um, giving you information so that you can decide whether this is what you are looking for for your little one. First of all, Purely Preschool is not for you if your child is ready for systematic letter learning and that's what you want to focus on is for them to really learn the alphabet and really start getting prepared for kindergarten. This is a what I would call a younger level preschool. In my experience it is really targeted more toward the kind of three-year-old age group. That time when they're ready for these learning, ready, they can talk. <laughs> my kids didn't talk early so three-year-old seems to be when they can really like kind of talk, engage in conversations, um, but not when they're ready to you know start writing and really, you know, sounding out letters and all that type of thing. There are, there is alphabet activities included, but it's in purely an exposure style. Just playing with letters, getting comfortable with letters, not in systematically learning them at all. If your child is ready for systematically learning the alphabet, do check out Alphabet Adventures, my actual pre-K alphabet phonics curriculum that I also have on my website. I will link it down below. But Purely Preschool exists in two languages, Spanish and in English. And this is for you if you are the kind of mom who's, it's springtime and you see somebody else doing a bunny unit study, a little bunny week theme for their little preschooler. And you think that that sounds so fun and you wanna do some bunny learning activities with your preschooler. Um, and you guys think, you think you'd have a lot of fun doing that and fun conversations. But then you think about realistically who you are and you're like, uh, well actually I'm not going to be able to acquire 10 rabbit themed books. Maybe I don't have good library access, maybe I don't have the budget for it, whatever the reason may be, I'm, I'm not going to be able to have that whole basket of bunny books. And I'm not going to go out and buy cotton balls and buy little and cut out little felt carrots and make this bunny sensory bin. And I'm, I, I, you know, and um, I don't really want to print out a hundred pages of rabbit themed activities where we get to count the rabbits and count the carrots and then have R-A-B-B-I-T and have my three-year-old try to spell rabbit, which that, that doesn't make sense. A lot of three-year-olds probably aren't ready for that type of activity. So this is for you if you love that idea of themed weeks with your preschooler but you're maybe a little bit minimalist or maybe you just don't have the budget or the access to all those resources to make it super extra. And you also want your activities to be more, you want themed activities, but you want them meaningful. You want them focused on practical life skills and real conversations that you can have about topics that kids need to know. Then this is for you because that is the heart behind Purely Preschool. I am going to be showing you inside one of my units just a couple facts, frequently answered questions. There are currently nine units of Purely Preschool available on the website. You can choose either English or Spanish versions. They are all literature based. They have only two books required per unit. So it's not an overwhelming number of books to acquire. And I also include YouTube read aloud links in case you are not able to access those books. I very much relate to that because I live overseas. I don't have great library access and I can't. I often hear book recommendations and I can't get those books. <laughs> so I find that frustrating when trying to use a literature based curriculum. So uh, that's what it is. There may be another unit added. I have been requested to add a winter themed unit. Um, I may be able to do that this year. If not this year, it might be coming next year. We will see. So the number of units might grow, but it's currently nine. Each unit is available for $4.99 each. And in the description of this video, if you're watching this video, I'm gonna go ahead and leave you a little discount code. If you've been thinking about trying Purely Preschool, you want a little discount on your first unit, I'll leave you a little discount code down below in the description that you can paste in at checkout if you feel ready to try it. But the units are just $4.99 for what you get. And no, you do not get like 100 pages of printables. I 
you, this does not have the quantity of pages that you will see in a lot of preschool resources and that is very intentional because I think in, when we have so much quantity we kind of reduce our quality and we reduce our intentionality so I intentionally included a few printable activity pages and not a ton of printable activity pages because we don't need to be doing that many <laughs> activity pages this is streamlined themed preschool uh, I've also been asked what are my favorite units of purely preschool from doing them and from writing them I would say my favorites are food I think that one is just so unique as a theme and the way I structured it is unique because we have breakfast snack time lunch and dinner and the main the heart topics we go into are about manners table time manners and they are about nutrition as well on a three-year-old level so it's not just cutesy fruits and vegetables and clip art it's real ideas that are age appropriate for our three-year-olds to learn they need to learn some basic table time manners and courtesies they need to learn this just very foundational ideas of nutrition another one of my favorites is vehicles at work because I have vehicle obsessed children that one has emergency vehicles construction vehicles tractors and trucks so it's just it's just a hit it's a hit in every single way it's something <laughs> that they were obsessed with it was a lot of fun to write we've got a lot of really fun um, activities in there with a lot of real life connections and I also really like night the overarching theme throughout that one is bedtime and dealing with bedtime issues that is an overarching life skills theme throughout that whole unit but it also has a lot of fun and cute things owls and bats moon and stars so there's a lot of amazing activities about that and the other one is all about me i think i took a very unique approach to the all about me unit um, those are my top favorites interestingly though all of the most best sellers are my seasonal themed units. So that's the spring, fall, and summer themes are definitely the ones that have been sold the most and used the most, but they're not actually my personal favorites. And that's maybe because we don't have seasons where we live. All right, I'm gonna turn you around and just give you a look into the unit so you can see what I'm talking about. If you have any more questions, definitely leave them in the comments below. I'm very happy to answer any questions you may have. All right, I'm going to show you inside the food unit because that's one of my favorites and I am showing you the English version because I know that most of my viewership is English speaking, but the exact same unit exists in, uh, in Spanish as well. Here's our supply list. You will see my supply lists are basically this short or sometimes shorter. They are very basic. I don't tend to own a lot of fancy stuff and fancy supplies and I base this on things that would be reasonable for me to have. We have our book list, which shows the books required for each lesson. We have four lessons in this unit, and each lesson is scheduled to take about a week. We only have two required books. I do include one extra book that connects to the topic, just in case you're feeling extra, or maybe in case you can't get one of these, you wanna replace it with one, that's great. Then, for each week, you have this. It's basically a two-page checklist of activities. You can do every activity once. You could do some of the favorite activities two or three times each. Repetition is really great with young preschoolers. Don't necessarily think you have to do things just once. But you could do it just once, or maybe you could look at an activity and think, eh, that doesn't work for us. We'll skip it. But these activities are very intentionally designed. We have our two books that we can read aloud. We have an alphabet related activity. So this alphabet related activity does come with a little activity sheet here where we're cutting out different foods. We get to work on little vocabulary. We get to make the sound pa, 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 and see which ones start with pa. Can we hear the pa, the P sound at the beginning of each food? Then here we have comparing quantities for early math, which also has an activity page. We've got these fun stacks of pancakes and we just get to think about more and less. You're also encouraged, don't leave this to the activity page. Continue to give your child opportunities to practice quantity comparison just throughout your week. Work this into your natural life during this week. For let's play, we're looking, we're making the sound p. We're thinking about things that begin with p, p, p in our house. We have apples and bananas all of our music is going to be food themed music in this unit of course then we have our memory statement what i eat gives me energy to work and play so this is a basic three-year-old level idea of calories 
and not in a bad way. <laughs> then we have a motor skills activity with flipping pancakes, but we we make a little felt or cardboard circle, try to flip it in a frying pan. This has been an activity that multiple people using this unit have said that their kids just love, that it was a whole lot of fun, a whole lot of silliness, um, but it's easy to do. It's not an overwhelming activity. We have a connected life skill activity. Let's get involved in cleaning up our kitchen after breakfast. Our health and safety is that kitchen tools are hot and can burn. We can walk through our kitchen and look at all the different appliances that can steam, that can burn, and talk about heat safety, burn safety with our kids. We include love homework. We include a Bible verse. You could use this as a memory verse with a three-year-old. Realistically, I just use these as something for the mom to read and connect with to have some of these basic connection ideas. And it can also be something that you talk about with your kid, a little conversation starter. Uh, and we have the extras is where I put any of the activities that require more time, that require more supplies, anything like if you're feeling extra, go ahead and do these. If you're not feeling extra, you know, that's why it's called extra. <laughs> then we have our snack time. We have, again, the alphabet activity is an activity page, which is behind here. Right here, we have alphabet plates. We get to say the sounds of the letters. Your child is not expected to know these sounds. This is very much a guided together type of activity with your child at this stage, at this age. It's just playing together. Then for early math, we're making snack shapes. So we're gonna use cookie cutters and you can cut bread, cheese, or fruits. You know, use whatever cookie cutter shapes you have and have fun with making little shapes with cookie cutters. I have mini cookie cutters and those are super fun to cut fruits with and great for making little shapes. Then um, we're gonna do, oh, playing with food. This was a fun one. Um, putting different fruits or vegetables, foods inside a paper bag, have your child reach into the bag and guess what it is by touching it. This is a great vocabulary building activity because we are doing this in Spanish. It was really great for reinforcing the Spanish names of fruits and vegetables with my kids, um, but it's fun. And you can even put packaged food in there and then see what, what they could guess by feeling a package. We gotta have C's for cookie when we're doing snack time. That is a classic from my childhood, of course. And then uh, again, we have a science kind of health connection related here. We wash fruits and vegetables before we eat them. I have memory cards for each of these underlined statements. These are complete sentences, memory statements you can use with your kids so they can memorize the full sentence, but I also intend them to be conversation starters. So you don't just tell your child this, you talk about why, what does it make a difference? You can do the action with your kid. It's supposed to spark, it's supposed to spark action and spark understanding. Then we have a motor skills activity, uh, small snack items. You can use tongs to transfer. Uh, so it's a very typical transfer activity with young children. Great for building hand strength and fine motor skills. But again, it's not something that's gonna require you to go out and get special supplies. Use whatever kitchen tongs or something of that sort that you have. Or maybe they have a toy in their toy box that could work as tongs. Life skills at the grocery store. We're building vocabulary for names of different produce. And you can even encourage them to look at and notice some produce that you don't, guys don't normally buy. Here's a health topic, knowing the difference between a treat and a snack. And I talk a little bit about how you can introduce this concept to your kids. You can bring it up through your week. You know, the difference between having an apple as a snack versus maybe having ice cream as a little treat or a chocolate, whatever, whatever is treats for your family. You know, in your family, it's gonna be different for every, every different family, but that's a great topic to talk about in your family's culture. What is What are treats and what are snacks? Again, we go through our love homework, a little opportunity to serve, to build relationships, build connection with other people in your family, our Bible verse, and then we have our little extra activities. I do occasionally include art studies that you can do with your child with classic artwork. I don't think I have it here because for those ones, I have them together with the Spanish. We have lunch. I'm not gonna go through every single thing, but I hope that you can get an idea. By the way, if you want a closer look, if you wanna try out Purely Preschool before you buy it, I do have a sample in either English or Spanish available on my website, and I will link to that below. 
Oh yeah, yeah. Definitely want to grow mold on bread. That that gets that's very exciting for children. <laughs> um, we in this one, our math activity is playing with a menu and playing with doing a little restaurant. And then we have these cards where you get to serve um, serve um, that your child gets to serve people in their family a meal. They're playing restaurant, and based on the order, they get to serve certain foods. Um, to the people in their family. That is a super, super fun one. For dinner, we're actually getting into the fact that there's quite a variety in the types of food eaten around the world. It is one of our concepts, and we're also talking about good table manners at home. So, and we also get into food as hospitality, which I don't, I don't think it's ever too early to talk to kids about, you know, how we can be hospitable, how they can play a role in being hospitable. Now, the only color ink that you're going to need in the whole program is for the visual cards. I did make these as photographs, uh, so they do have color in them. You could technically print it without color, but it does look nice with color. I purposely keep color ink printing to a minimum. I cut these out and I laminate them so that we can play around with these cards. We hide these cards and play hide and seek. We do slap the card. We have my son holds the cards and tests me on if I can say them. Um, so we play with these in a lot of different ways. And those are our people around the world eat different kinds of meals. Those are our, uh, what, are, what are we talking about? Visual cards <laughs> um, for the unit. Then. Here, here's vehicles at work. I just want to show this to you because look at that cover art. That's probably one of my favorite cover arts. And this has a lot of fun activities as well. Let me see if, see, there's this dump truck activity. It's so fun. I've had people send me videos of them and their kids doing it. You paste this, you tape or paste this part of the dump truck onto this part. And then you have letters of the alphabet and you can play with putting the letters in, taking them out, saying their sounds. It's a whole lot of fun. That is what I have to show you. I hope this answers your questions. Now I did want to address organization quick a minute. Um, I use the Spanish version. So this is how I have my version organized. I just have everything in a big binder. So this holds all nine units. It's maybe a little overstuffed. Might be, my binder should have been slightly bigger. But I have all the units together and then I just put all the pages for one week into one page protector and I have cut out and laminated the memory cards and I slide them in with my pages for the week. So I have one page protector and that's one week of our lesson plan. And any pages that I use up went behind the lesson plan, like any activity pages. So when I do this again with my younger son, I am going to have to, when I do this again with my younger son, I'll just have to reprint the little student pages that we used up but everything's all organized and the visual cards are right there for me to use um, again. And I, I guess I didn't, I didn't remember that I did this. I guess I saved a bunch of the little activities that we did and now I'm getting all nostalgic looking at them. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is Purely Preschool. Let me know if you have any questions. I hope that you liked this video and found it helpful. Bye.